This week, a study about nanoplastic particles in plastic water bottles and the water industry's response to the study prompted this rather breathless headline, appropriately in all caps on futurism.com. Bottled water industry says, please disregard this horrifying discovery about our product. Horrifying discovery? These are strong words. Are they justified? Or is it a reflection of how constant hubris devalues the power of language? If they are justified, what should we know? What can we do? If they are not justified, does that mean we can disregard everything this article talks about and there's nothing to see here? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. This article is surely a case study in alarmist language. Doesn't necessarily mean that alarm isn't justified, but it doesn't just talk about a study. It's a concerning study. Not just a discovery, but a horrifying discovery. This is masquerading as a news story, remember. First, what are these nanoplastic particles, the presence of which is described as so horrifying? They are particles so small that they are measured on the billionths of a metre scale. What has especially concerned the article writer is that there are indications that they can enter human cells with consequences unknown. According to Beijan Yan of Columbia University, speaking to The Hill website, nanoplastics can cross into the blood and then can cross the different barriers to get into the cells. This could interfere with cellular organs, causing them to malfunction. We always try to be wary of statements that have the word could in them. So what is the research that's referenced here that shows this damage potential and what does it actually specifically say? Now that reference comes from this article in The Lancet by Ali et al. from December 2023. The summary says this. This review aims to provide an overview of the potential impacts of NMPs on various organ systems and identify knowledge gaps in current research. The summarised results suggest that exposure to MNPs can lead to health effects through oxidative stress, inflammation, immune dysfunction, altered biochemical and energy metabolism, impaired cell proliferation, disrupted microbial metabolic pathways, abnormal organ development and carcinogenicity. Why could it lead to any of those things? Because it's potentially bringing into your cells endocrine disrupting chemicals such as bisphenols, phthalates, flame retardants, heavy metals and other stuff. These could also make their way to your liver, your kidney, your brain, could cross the placenta to find their way to your unborn child. All sounds pretty serious, but again very much speculative as it's framed in the article. There is limited human data on the health effects of MNPs despite evidence from animal and cellular studies. And it concludes with this. Future studies should investigate MNP's exposure by considering realistic concentrations, dose-dependent effects, individual susceptibility and confounding factor, i.e. the studies to date have not considered those things. You would have to say that it all sounds concerning. We would want that follow-on research to be carried out. It's somewhat short of horrifying right now because there is no current wave of people suffering massive health problems based on exposure to plastics that we've been able to observe or determine. It's not a call to complacency. A risk that you don't know or understand should generally be treated as a bigger risk than any known factor, because though you might fondly hope that what you don't know won't hurt you, wishful thinking has a relatively poor performance record in history when it comes to problems at the cellular level and other problems, to be fair. 
So what does this latest research actually say about all of this? Well, it simply says that there are likely hundreds of thousands of these nanoplastic particles in every plastic bottle of water, which is about 10 to 100 times more than had been previously estimated. One litre of water in plastic was found using new detection methods to contain an average of 240,000 plastic particles from seven different types of plastics, 90% of which were nanoparticles. Going into your body, doing who knows, maybe nothing? Maybe stuff you really wish that they wouldn't do. This followed a study in 2018 by Mason et al., which tested 11 different water brands from 19 locations in nine different countries and found that nearly all of them showed signs of microplastics. Now, that was before the technology existed to analyse for the smallest particles. Now that those techniques do exist, we may be able to start making some progress in actually working out whether it does impact human health and if so, how? Sherry Mason, the lead author of that 2018 study, said this, We've been very limited in our ability to understand the potential impact of the polymers on human health because we have not been able to detect down to that level. Now, with this new approach, we will be able to start doing so. So if we turn back to the original press article... You'll recall that it was particularly scathing about the bottled water industry's response. Nothing to see here, folks, it was described as saying. Now the bottled water industry has cried foul, claiming it's totally fine we're all ingesting these nanoplastics and that the Columbia team's research is nothing more than fear-mongering. To be fair... The industry response statement does not say that the research itself is fear-mongering. It actually says this. Media reports about these particles in drinking water do nothing more than unnecessarily scare consumers. If the media reports were sticking to the substance of the research rather than layering on their own interpretations of horrifying discoveries they would no doubt be able to defend themselves from that charge. It is, after all, their duty to keep us informed. We should be treated as adults who can be so informed. But looking at the language of the coverage, you'd kind of have to concede that at this time, on this specific point, the industry has a fair criticism. It's not just that one article either. Here's another one. Put down that Dasani bottle, it begins, and take a gander at some horrible news, likely meaning untold deleterious impacts on the human body and our environment. The likelihood seems entirely presumed by the author. We do not know the likelihood. It's hard to know what you would expect the industry to do about an issue, that so far has shown zero actual evidence of harm, even if it's clear that there's a line of investigation that should be followed with a degree of urgency. Fine. But what should they do? Shut down their entire operations? I mean, what would you have them actually do? As the industry reasonably pointed out, the World Health Organization carried out a review of the available studies and concluded that no adverse health effects could be assumed from dietary exposure to nanoplastic particles. That was because there had been minimal research into the question, not because there was evidence showing lack of harm. Lack of evidence of harm is not the same as evidence of lack of harm, just to be clear. But also the WHO noted that such particles are now everywhere in the environment that we live in. I mean, you're not avoiding this stuff easily, whatever you do. It's in the air, it's in the dust, it's in the water, it's in the food and the beverages. So why in that case would you specifically target the bottled water industry? Well, because the latest survey was looking at that specifically... And a lot of people, particularly of an environmentalist perspective, tend to be rather down on the whole idea 
of water in plastic bottles for all sorts of reasons. So is the sensible conclusion that as a result of this report, we should demonise the bottled water industry specifically? Doesn't seem likely. Because it doesn't seem possible to remove the existing particles from our environment even if you got rid of a bottled water. Wipe out the entire industry tomorrow. This particular problem is still not going to go away. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not painting any industry as purely an unfairly maligned group of flawless individuals. We have seen in history that when evidence does emerge that there's a problem, industry bodies are highly likely, at least in the first instance, to resist. To try to confuse the public about the validity of the evidence, to delay any sort of consequences for their bottom line. It's just the human process of dealing with bad news, of dealing with grief, if you like, that we do in our own lives. Denial first, then anger, then bargaining, depression, and then finally acceptance. Corporations are groups of human beings, so it shouldn't be a surprise that it goes through, collectively, the same process. The number of corporations that are made up of genuinely malevolent types who can know everything and not care, you have to be vigilant, but they do remain the minority. So yes, on this issue specifically, we need to find out more. Knee-jerk reactions with the big consequences that would follow, clearly premature, and that's not just big water talking. It's just a reflection of the degree of evidence that's actually been found so far. The problem, as always, is that this discussion takes a perfectly balanced piece of research that doesn't, as far as I could see, make claims beyond what's supported by evidence and layers on the usual dynamic. Bottled water is a product that has a number of benefits in different situations. It also has a number of risks and disadvantages. One group is steadfastly against bottled water on principle. It's one of the symbolic flags waved by certain groups of environmentalists. They see only the risks and only the disadvantages, and they shout loudly about them. Then you have the industry that makes good profit from selling water to people in a form that they may find convenient. They see only the benefits. They also shout quite loudly. The rest of us are left standing between the two, trying to make sense of it all. Well, look, we've had water in plastic bottles and many, many other products in plastic for decades. I mean, really, I'm an old git now and they have been there pretty much my whole life. So we might prefer that we didn't have plastic microparticles getting into our body. But since we're all living longer than we used to, presumably it's not a catastrophic reality. And again, I'm not preaching complacency here. We do want to find this out. But it doesn't seem the obvious platform for panic. The main problem right now seems to be that the way we talk about such issues, let's face it, fueled by a media that's trying to use extraordinary language to generate clicks on behalf of their advertisers, and we, we know that nothing gets clicks quite like a good scare story, the way we talk about such issues doesn't help us to follow evidence to a sober and rational calculation of priority and risk. Personally, I generally drink tap water if I'm at home. If I'm on the go, bottled water could be quite convenient. If I'm in a country where the quality of the water there is less reliable, then bottled water is absolutely essential. Now, nothing I've seen so far in these studies changes how I would rate any of those. For you, well, your tolerance for risk might differ. I would keep an eye on the stories to come as the research moves forward. Just don't buy into the alarmist language of the headline writers and the article writers. Always look at what the research actually says and consider whether the evidence is in line with how it's being described. It's annoying that we have to do that, but this is the world that we live in.